Milo Yiannopoulos thinks that the sharing economy is a load of bollocks. His words. He's the editor-in-chief of The Colonel uh, and a writer and journalist for other publications. He's going to come out and give you 10 reasons why the sharing economy is bollocks. Please welcome Milo to the stage. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Milo Yiannopoulos. I am the uh, founder and editor-in-chief of the newly revamped Kernel. As some of you will know, uh, we suspended publication uh, regrettably uh, recently, but uh, we've just uh, re-secured funding and we're opening again for business on August 12th. So um, that's the first time I've said, said so live in London, so we're, we're very happy about that. Um, I'm going to talk to you today on this subject. Um, now, I've been, I hear a lot as a journalist um, from these sorts of companies, and I'm sort of thinking to myself, I don't, are these people mad? Are these people nuts? I mean, owning stuff is awesome. Um, so I'm going to sort of take you through why I think that um, the sharing economy is a problem. And the first reason is that it's actually got nothing to do with sharing. Um, the first problem is that the word, the expression itself doesn't really mean anything. So I'll give you an example. Um, Airbnb, this is not a sharing business. This is a rental business. It's actually buy-to-let for short-term rents. Uh, you pay money, you get the rent. Uh, you, you, you get the apartment for a particular period of time. Um, and when you think actually about what the businesses do that are called the sharing economy businesses, you very quickly realize that none of this stuff's actually sharing. The way that the value is transacting, the way the money is moving, it's not sharing, it's just rental or loans. Um, so first of all, that doesn't make any sense. Second of all, it's not an economy because, in fact, it's something like the opposite of an economy. If you look at the way that these businesses like Groupon, which are themselves sort of structurally inherently unstable, um, we're beginning to see this now, um, they're also, trying, they're also up, up, upending other more, more stable and more interesting bits of, of, of the economy because they attract the sorts of customers who are promiscuous, the sorts of customers that you will never get. The, the, what is the holy grail for business is lifetime value of loyalty uh, and repeat business. Um, this doesn't happen. It's actually quite destructive to the economy in all sorts of ways. And we'll talk a little bit, briefly a little bit more about what it does to brand value too in a minute. Um, it's dangerous. Airbnb, Airbnb puts prostitutes and drug dealers in your living room. Um, I find that to be quite terrifying. Um, you know, the stories of about this seems to come out every month, and the ones that you don't hear about are the ones where the people have been sort of happily paid off already. I mean, it's really scary to me, some of this stuff. The driving services are almost as bad. The driving services encourage people, particularly in countries where they have high penetration, like in Berlin, to share the key cards, which means that more people are driving unlicensed and more people are driving uninsured than before. And that worries me slightly. Um, it's also shot through with politics. And the problem is that it's shot through with politics that are really antithetical to the whole project of entrepreneurship. They're antithetical to, to enterprise um, at all. I mean, if you think about sort of the, this, this sort of this, this Western guilt mongering um, that is al always always seems to, to come along with the, with the sharing economy uh, company sort of marketing spiel. Like, you know, we consume so much, we're destructive capitalist bastards. Well, I don't feel guilty about being a capitalist. I feel quite nice about it. Um, you know, I rather like the things I can buy. I like having nice things. I don't want other people touching them. And, and, and I think that I'm probably in the majority for most kinds of purchase. Now, the problem is that because we've make, been made to feel guilty and almost pressurized into thinking that we don't, and that nothing of ours is our own anymore. Um, this, this, this sense, that, this sense of, of, of guilt starts to descend on us. So, well, if I don't want to lend out my apartment, does that make me some sort of awful person? Well, no, it doesn't. It makes you normal. Um, so, it's only for rich people. If you actually look at who uses these services, I mean, you know, you don't want to borrow a surfboard from someone else. I can't think of anything worse, but you have to be a surfer in the first place. The sorts of people who afford, you know, Airbnb can afford hotels anyway. This isn't some sort of democratizing process which is breaking down Rupert Murdoch's last barrier of, of uh, you know, travel and the way you travel as being the only difference between rich and poor people these days. It just doesn't work like that. This is a playground for the middle classes who are really upset about the fact um, that, they're, that they're so awfully capitally consumptive. I mean, it's 
almost like it was dreamed up on the page of The Guardian or The New York Times. It just doesn't make any sense. This is not how capitalism works. And in fact, it's never worked in the past. Um, because, you know, I, I mean, I'll point you to Russia. I'll point you to Cuba. I mean, these systems don't work because the value transactions in them are so small and insignificant for the people who are exchanging goods and services, and so vast for the people running those systems. So in our case, in our case you know, Airbnb or, or, or Zipcar or whatever, um, you know, in, in the Soviet's case, the sort of corrupt communist governments. I mean, this is this, it's just this weird socialist kind of like, idea that we should all be sharing our shit. I, mean, I don't get it. I don't understand what's going on. Um, next idea, I mean, it's emasculating. It's disempowering and it's demotivating, right? Let me explain. The basis of, for, and certainly my, my, my view is, the basis of capitalism is about aspiration. We're talking about the Thatcherite consensus now, right? It's about working hard to improve your lot, getting a better house, getting a better car, providing um, more comfortably for your family, right? This is a bit weird. If, if you are locating, as I think we all do, some of your self-esteem in the things that you can buy and the lifestyle you can provide, what also happens with that is that capitalism takes over and begins to do clever things with consumer choices. What actually happens with, um, let's say, washing powder, it's a great triumph of capitalism, I think it's terrific, right? That people can have an emotional connection to washing powder. It's an amazing thing. But when you start to um, not just find out who you are, but express who you are, advertise who you are, talk about who you are with other people through the consumer choices you make, you start to concentrate a lot of yourself in the big choices, and they will be the car, they'll be the house, and that's precisely the stuff that sharing economy is trying to take from you um, and say belongs to everybody else. So not only are you, are you losing that sense of accomplishment and achievement because now suddenly nothing of ours belongs to us anymore, and it isn't just social media which is taking our private lives and throwing them online publicly and permanently, but now even the physical stuff I own isn't mine anymore. It's slightly worse than that because we all need space. We all need privacy. But we don't just need uh, theoretical privacy in order to be well-adjusted, uh, happy, uh, sane individuals. We also need physical space. So we have good mental hygiene, we have good psychological health, we need our, a space that is our own, we need our own castle. This is, this is not news. But my worry is that these sorts of businesses rob us of that because they make us think, well, nothing really actually belongs to us anymore. And we've seen some pretty horrible examples in history of what happens when, uh, you know, when, when government or when, when business starts, to, starts to, to, to behave like this. Um, the other thing is, it's turning into a bit of a cult. Now, whenever you, whenever you hear in the technology industry one of these buzz phrases, it sort of becomes this, this inalienable, unalterable truth. I mean, the lean startup is a brilliant example. Have you ever tried to suggest to anyone who works in the tech technology industry that the lean startup methodology might not be a good idea for all businesses? I mean, my God, you know, you're sort of machine gunned against the wall. Now, it's a big, it's a big worry when you hear this in the technology industry, when you hear people Sort of try, everybody wants to be part of this, this, this sh new sharing economy thing. Doesn't it just sound lovely? It all sounds like we're nice, sweet, wonderful people. Well, the people who are making money out of this and the people who are benefiting from this aren't you. They're the companies running. They're, they're the people running these businesses because, um, as, as an article in Quartz said today, which was very good, um, the people who are running the sharing economy are not sharing the wealth generated with it. And what happens well, when that goes on for too long is that people get sick of it. They realize they're being taken for a ride. And, for example, communist governments fall. Now, the best things in life can't be shared. Now, I suggested that a house and a car, they might be your biggest purchases, but they're not the best things in your life. The best things in your life might be your children. I mean, I've, I'm sure there is some audacious Silicon Valley entrepreneur out there somewhere who is suggesting that it might be a good idea to rent out your kids at the weekends. In fact, I'm sure, I'm sure you know, maybe Sequoia is thinking of investing in him, but um, it, it doesn't sound like a particularly nice thing to do to me. And in fact, none of the best things um, in, in life can be shared. And it's those best things um, that contain the greatest um, the greatest potential value, not just as, as um, but it's those things that we are prepared to overpay for by a huge margin. Um, it's the look, you know, the, the, the memories, the look on a child's face. So holidays, for example, um, seems weird to me that we would try to um, make holidays so much less special by sort of this grubby sharing of space. I mean, I don't want to stay in someone else's apartment. I want a hotel. You know, I want this sort of nice experience. But, but instead, we, we sort of have, um, we have this situation where holidays now become part of you sort of engaging in someone else's life somehow. And, and I don't want that. I want this sort of this clear, nice space when I go on holiday. This is being, this is being denied to us. And, Finally, 
Um, sharing's a bit out of control already anyway. Now, I touched briefly on this before. Um, we were already in a situation where we have very little control over the sorts of information that, which, when, which when we share it, can be, can be displayed publicly and permanently about us forever, and that data used by, by technology businesses. Now, what worries me is that we've gone from a point where social networks have, have really you know, given no uh, regard or respect whatsoever for our online possessions and our data to companies who are now telling us that even the stuff we own isn't, ours, isn't entirely ours anymore either. Now, that worries me because it suggests that there is a slightly darker, more sinister ideology at work behind not just these businesses, but perhaps even the whole of Silicon Valley. It sounds conspiratorial, I know, but um, what's going on when you know, the private space, not just the, not just the mental space, but the physical space, the space that we use to store our possessions, the space that we, you know, the, the, the methods we use to get around, these sort of essential human principles of security with the home, autonomous mobility with the car. We're now being told that we should, instead of pay, be paying for cars, we should be paying for mobility or transportation. We don't buy a car anymore, we just buy the ability to get around. Well, it's pretty central to my thinking that you know, security and autonomous mobility are really very much required for us to be uh, you know, comfortable, mature actors, for us to be able to provide for our families, for us to, to have these things. And, and there seems to be, to, 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 to wrap up um, this, this section, there seems to be this idea that, that owning things is wrong, and for the fifth time, I've got to tell you, I love owning things, right? So let's forget about that. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring it to an end because I know you've had a long day, but I just ask you to consider a few things um, about the sharing economy. Um, one of them is it's disrupting the relationship that we have with the things that we purchase in, let's, just, let's, let's limit it to one way, really important way, right? One of the greatest achievements of capitalism which is, I said, I said earlier, you know, having an emotional connection with a washing machine. It's this, or an emotional connection with washing powder. It's this idea that we are advertising and investing ourselves in the things that we buy, surrounding, the, you know, surrounding ourselves with them. And it's just one component in the, in the package of things that we do to find out who we are and to advertise who we are. Almost every sharing economy business is eroding that. And in an era where we have less and less control over our data, less and less control over our possessions, less and less control over the things that we thought we used to own, the worry is that these, there, are, there are businesses creaming a happy profit off the top of an enormous disorientation. We all feel these days uh, like you know, disorientated actors in a, in a globalized economy that's requiring us to move, to change jobs more often, more often than ever before. I think it would be nice if our personal property was left alone. Thank you very much. And if you are interested, we're back in August. Thanks very much. Thank you, Milo. How are you Thank doing? You. I'm very well. Thank you. Nice to see you again. You have the coolest outfit. I've been living in Berlin for six weeks. It just happens. I'm normally in blazers here, I know. but I, it's, it's This is like you've been <sighs> transformed. I know. I, I, thought, I thought I should dress like one of these guys if I was going to take them no, out. I might, you know? uh, can you give me some advice on Relooking, re or you know, yeah, sure, sure, you, sure. I don't know if you saw Julian Smith. He had big, like, how no, do you call those, like it. holes? The, 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 oh, the holes in the ears. Yeah, like, like this. I'm terrified by those. How do they even do it? Like, how can do you? Use how it do, as you a do you just, do you just have like a really big stamp? Yeah, you go. Like a sort of like a yeah. queen-sized stamp. And then you can use it as a key holder. Right, right, right. Sort of so for the clicker, maybe. Yes, and with Google Glass, then it's totally perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. Do, do you think he's right that it's uh, bollocks, you say? I said bollocks, yeah. You said bollocks. Yeah, so it's That's very, very British. 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 Yeah. It's very British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the Americans would say... What would you say? Well, I have my French accent will be bullshit. 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 Total. The sharing economy is bullshit. <laughs> it's, oh, it's, much less, it's much better. You parle français? No, no, um, no it's, it's, uh, bullshit is better. I like that. Well, thanks very much, thanks my love. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Geraldine, you're here. Uh, did you have a good day? <laughs> oh. Awesome. It looks like they had a good day. I hope so. And uh, downstairs it was... It was great. We survived day one. Yes. <laughs> it's, uh, it's been a great day for us as well. Um, great, great content. I really liked it. And the whole... Uh, I mean, I guess it shows that you've been doing this with a team for 10 years. Because <laughs> it's been flawless. Uh, yeah. Well... It was pretty okay, I think so. It helps. It helps. Uh, thank you, team. <laughs>
<laughs> the tomorrow we'll see you at uh, nine British time uh, for uh, Alex Tess Ale uh, for Axel Tessandier who will open with the digital hippies. You know that was part of the theme, the sharing economy and digital hippies, and um, and she will she will have a great talk. Then uh, I, I won't go through the whole thing, but the founder of Burning Man is going to be at. at at least one of my highlights. Uh, Memoto will launch on stage. You know, it's a sharing camera that takes a picture every, I think, 20 sec, every every it's something. Even worse all than the, the glass. So it's worse than the glass. It takes pictures all the time. Yeah. So they're going to launch, and Mark Suster, Martin Varsevsky will talk about uh, um, uh, the legal aspects of uh, sharing economy and how to make it uh, legal. Uh, we will disclose our uh, startup competition. How did that go? It was packed, right? Uh, it was great, and we'll yeah we will have the free um, uh, the free finalists tomorrow. They'll they'll be on stage on this stage uh, for the final yeah, I can't tomorrow wait. afternoon. Yeah, and um, I hear it was it was it was good. The president of Zipcar, uh, which will give his uh, perspective more like of a large company perspective, and uh, Bitcoin is going to be really, really cool as well. I'm looking forward to it. I have friends who want me to buy Bitcoins. So, Anyone has Bitcoins? Wow. Yeah, <laughs> really? <you>. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremiah, OK. You have five. <laughs> well, you, you did you 5x or something, right? <laughs> OK, cool. Uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll take Bitcoins at the next low web. You can buy your ticket in, uh, in Bitcoins. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. PayPal said they will. Yes, but PayPal, we already do. Anyway. I'm not going to uh, keep talking <laughs> alone, but thank you very much for having been with us uh, today, and uh, we'll see you all tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Have a great evening. Have a great evening. Thank you all. <laughs> <laughs>